Hi everyone, we are here in the Aldersgate Kitchen. We're gonna be making some salt dough that we can use for our advent spiral calendar. So I've got Lee over here and Ruth's over here. Um, and I am behind the camera and we'll be walking you through how to make this salt dough. So to make salt dough, you need exactly three things. All purpose flour, simple, store brand, nothing fancy. You need salt, again, just basic table salt, grab the big, big jar, and then you need water, just plain old water, nothing fancy with that. So three really simple ingredients. All right, you guys, you ready? You need two cups of all-purpose flour, and you need one cup of salt. Okay, so two cups of all-purpose flour and one cup of salt. We're going to have to work on Lee's pouring skills. Ruth's got it. Scoop it out. It's a little less messy. Lee's picked the wrong measuring cup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's now flour everything. So three simple ingredients, right? Flour, salt, water. You can make you can make a lot of things with just those three things, and they're pretty um, they're pretty essential in any kitchen. So it has us kind of thinking: What are your three essentials? Water, salt, and flour. Um, chocolate. Chocolate. Reese says chocolate. <laughs> You could do a lot with chocolate. I was thinking more like family, uh, well, we friends. <laughs> chocolate works too, but it's. I mean, it's kind of nice to think about. Like, what? What are those three essentials? Um, because thinking about how much we can do with just some flour and salt and water, um, it comes together. Obviously, if we put in a little bit less salt. Um, and maybe added some yeast or a little bit of sugar, two cups of flour, yep. Then we probably could come up with some really good bread. Um, cookies, what else could we make with flour and water? If we swapped out the milk for water, it would be even better. But for the sake of salt dew ornaments, nothing, nothing fancy. Salt is really heavy. The salt, yeah, there you go. One, right? Just one cup of salt. Yep, you can go ahead and pour it in there. Yeah, Lee's got to open the new thing of salt. So let's see if we can help him with that. So this Advent Spiral is kind of a cool way of marking um, the season. Um, it's a little bit different from an Advent wreath. It's got more than just the four Sundays in Advent. We're actually going to mark um, 25 days of December. Um, Advent's kind of weird. It's not like Lent where you know you're going to have 40 days no matter what. Um, Advent kind of fluctuates a little bit. It depends on when the four Sundays fall. So, for example, this year, Advent began on November the 29th. So, um, this is more of a, a calendar rather than just a, an Advent wreath like what we're gonna, what you see in our church. All right. So they've got their um, their stuff together. Add the water. Add it. Don't necessarily dump that whole cup in. Start with um, start with about a half a cup and kind of. Get your hands in there. You can get a spoon if you want to. That's not near as much fun. Do you need a spoon, Lee? No. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. All right. Sleeves are up. Sleeves are up. So add a little bit of water. Start bringing it together. Get your hands in there. They're doing it today. I've already I've already made one. So I've already gotten my hands in there. Um, lots of memories. Lots of memories. 
it's like making play-doh you can add a little add a little bit more water I think I took about three quarters of a cup for me it just kind of depends you want it all to come together now that you've got it all over your hands it's like making um, pastry or dough or something like that so we're actually gonna need it as well once you kind of get it all together into a ball let's see we're gonna add a little bit more water for Lee that'll help get it all together so get in there it's lots of fun it smells it smells really good in here it smells like flour So once it comes together and you can get kind of a ball out of it, flip it out of your um, flip it out of your bowl, and you probably want to use the counter for this. And you might even sprinkle a little bit of flour down. Um, and you're gonna want to knead it for a little while. So here we huh? here we go. Here's some got, some, got some, got some flour for you. All right, there we go. All right, I think you can flip that out. And <laughs> you do not need that much flour to um, to knead. Um, Ruth just got a little overzealous. She's really excited about the salt oil. Um, all right, yep, so just kind of knead it and break it. Oh, there's my hand. Sorry, guys, we're not a professional camera crew in here in the kitchen. Um, just having a little bit of Advent fun here. Mm. Do that again. Wait, how'd that go? Oh. You can even throw it like you're throwing some pizza dough <laughs> if you want to. Um, <laughs> you just want to knead it. Yeah. You just want to knead it. Don't try this at home. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't flip it too much at home. So, thinking about kneading. Why do we need? Why do we need things? Why do we need bread do? Anybody know? Just keep kneading it's, it. Um, breaks down gluten or something. It does. Yeah. It, it brings everything together and it strengthens it. Yeah. So, we're kind of thinking about how... I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like 2020 has been um, like that kind of kneading technique where <laughs> Lee is pounding the dough. Um, that might be kind of how um, 2020 feels, but um, it's kind of coming together and bringing together. And if we're thinking about like Advent themes, um, one, of the, one of the passages that we read is from Isaiah and it talks about how God is going to bring the valleys kind of lift up the valleys and bring the mountains low, kind of making um, making a way, making a way in the wilderness. And I think there's kind of something about that kneading process of the more you knead, the stronger the dough come, comes together and you build things up. Lee's jumping the gun, Ruth's jumping the gun a little bit, kind of starting to stretch their advent spiral down, but... Um, how does it feel? Less sticky? Less sticky. Less yeah, sticky? Feels good? All right. So when you think that you've kneaded your dough enough, and it doesn't take, I mean, remember, we're not making, we're not making bread dough here. Um, so there's no exact science to this. But when you feel like you've got your dough together and um, you're kind of ready to roll, literally, we are going <laughs> to roll. We're going to make a snake. You're going to make a really long snake. And if you think about it, a spiral is going to go kind of around a little bit. And so you want, you want a good long, um, a good long spiral. Yep. You want to be able to put 25 kind of markers um, or candles in that. So roll it out. You kind of roll a little bit. Um, at least it's a little bit, it's still a little sticky. It might need some more kneading. Yeah, a little bit more flour in there. 
Get it in there. There we go. Yeah, Reese got some extra to spare. So roll it out, stretch it out. Um, you can roll. You can kind of. It's almost like a, a pop sock. You know, where you kind of kind of stretch out and roll. Um, and you want you want your your you want your spiral to be kind of a good inch, if not more thick, because you're gonna want it to hold up. Um, you're gonna want it to hold a candle or something like that. So while they're working on their snake um, and getting that rolled out, let's talk about what you can use for your advent spiral. So you can use a candle. Um, this is just a, a simple taper candle. If you've got one of these, um, smaller is probably better. Um, if it's too tall, then um, it might kind of topple over. Um, you'd have to make your spiral pretty, um, pretty substantial if you want to use too tall of a, of a tower. One of the other things that you can use is something like a marble. Um, I've got a whole kind of thing here um, that we rated from the messy church room, but you can grab some of these um, marbles. You can find them with like the, the gardening or flower arranging kind of things. Even a button would work if you've got a good, oh, sliding around in the, in the flower. But um, you can use a button or simple rocks. Um, my favorite thing is actually using a birthday candle. And these are like fancy birthday candles that have these little um, holders at the bottom, which means they stand up good and straight. Um, I think Ruth found these at the dollar store. So nothing nothing fancy, but they work really well. So decide how, um, how you wanna kinda walk through and whether you want one candle that you're gonna move for 25 days or whether you want 25 candles um, or 25 marbles. Um, however you wanna do it is fine, but you just kinda need to know before you start making your um, kind of your decision about how you're gonna do your spiral. So Ruth's got her spiral, and I tell you what, before you spiral it out, why don't you move it to your baking tray? Um, we've got our oven here in the kitchen on 350. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be exact. Um, once you get it on your tray, Ruth's gonna make a good um, spiral, kind of get it get it sorted the way that she wants it. Um, think about where you're going to put it because if it's too big you might not have space on your table. You might want to make a, a smaller spiral. Um, kind of spread it out a little bit. There you go. Lee's still kneading. Um, that's okay. More flour? Yeah. More flour! a little bit more flour. That's what happens when it's still sticky. Just kind of add, add some more flour to it. That'll bring it together. This is why we need things. This is why we need it. It's to bring that dough together and it stops being sticky um, and it starts being good to work with. So Ruth's got her spiral. Kind of stretch it out a little bit. Um, I think you're going to want to stretch it out a little bit more. It's going to flatten out as you stick the, the candle in. So you might want to space it a little, more. a little bit more. Just kind of build it out a little bit. Because when you stick the candle in, it's going to flatten out. I think you're probably going to need... You still want to use that candle? You might want to use the birthday candle. Um, so... All right, so Ruth's gonna use a birthday candle. She's gonna use one of these. And the easiest thing actually might be to take one of the marbles or something like that and just kind of mark out 25. So you wanna kind of space them out and you wanna get in there and kinda push down and leave that spot. Remember, this is gonna, it's gonna bake a little bit. So um, you wanna stretch it out. And remember, if you don't get your spacing right the first time around, no big deal. You just take it back down and roll it back out and it'll be fine. So she's pressing those in. 
And I tell you what, I'm gonna show you from here, what she's gonna do is come behind where she's got these holes. And she is gonna take the candle and kind of push it in. And you wanna make the hole a little bit bigger than what you started with, just so that when it when it bakes, you still have plenty of, kind of still have plenty, plenty of space. And if you don't have these like fancy candles, you can just use your, just use your regular birthday candles. Just kind of stick it in and you've got a hole, okay? So that's all you need to do. Just make sure it's got, just mark it out and mark that 25. And that's what your advent spiral is gonna look like. Um, we are gonna we're gonna pause the video because when Ruth gets done with want, done with this, we're gonna pop it in the oven, 350 degrees for about 20 25 minutes. Again, it's not bread, it's not exact. You just want to harden it up, um, and that should be enough to kind of get your Advent spiral good and um, hard, so that it is easy to move. The foil is gonna feel like it sticks to it, but once it's cool, you can kind of peel it off and it'll be easy peasy. All right, so this is how you make your advent spiral and we will show you what the final product looks like. We'll see you on the other side.